Hello and welcome to my channel. In this lesson, we're going to discuss about Newton's first law of motion. Before we continue, my name is Clive Ndemo and I'm urging you to subscribe to my channel so that you can have access to such videos in the future. Let us do our very first activity. I want you to get three things. I want you to get a glass, that's just a normal drinking glass, and also you get a coin. I want you to get a coin. Then also, I'm going to ask you to get a card, just a small card. It could be a cardboard card or your school ID card or any stiff cardboard card that you can use uh, for this demonstration. So this demonstration is going to help us understand Newton's first law of motion. So the first instruction is place the cardboard on top of the glass like that. Then put a coin on top of the card like that. Then suddenly flick away the card and see what happens. Let us do this together. I'm going to flick away the card like that. So what do you see? You see that the coin falls into the glass. From the experiment, it is noted that the coin was at rest on top of the cardboard and no force was acting on it. After the card was flicked away, the coin had no support and the gravity pulled it into the glass. From there, we need to ask ourselves something. Why did the coin fall? It can be concluded that objects at rest don't just begin to move on their own. A force must be applied on them. In our case, gravity was the force that caused the coin to move. It can be learned that if a body is at rest, it will continue remaining at rest. If it's in motion, it will continue being in motion. Now supposing our glass was a continuous glass, very just imagine it was a very continuous glass the coin could continue falling and it would continue falling until that time there could be a barrier or something that could make it uh, stop falling so from those uh, observations we can now be able to state newton's first law of motion and it says that a body remains in its state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless acted upon by an external force. That's what we saw in our experiment, that the coin was at rest on top of the card and it could have remained there at rest unless there was a force which was acting on it. If it was falling, assuming it was falling in a bottomless pit, it could have continued falling unless there was a force that was acting on it. Now, all of us have traveled in a car and you realize something. So I'm going to talk about the passenger vehicles. When you're in a vehicle and the vehicle is starting to move, eh, you feel like you're being pressed backward against the seat. So as the vehicle speeds up, eh, you feel that you're being pressed against the seat. When it's about to stop, eh, maybe there's a road bump ahead and the vehicle is trying to slow down, eh, you have a feeling that you're being forced to move forward. So you find that you are extending your head and neck forwards like that. So why does it happen that way? When the car stops, eh, your body simply wants to continue moving. So that's why you have to bend forwards because you're moving at the same velocity as the car and now the car has stopped your body wants to continue moving similarly when the car is accelerating your body wants to remain at rest remember the car was at rest or stationary and it was not moving so your body also was not moving when it starts moving your body wants to remain at rest so you have the feeling of being pressed against the seat when the car is starting. So in both cases, your body tries to resist changes in its state of motion. Your body wants to continue moving when the car stops and it wants to remain stationary when the car starts moving. 
This tendency of a body to resist change in its motion is called inertia. Then from there we need to learn something. Why do you think you have to put on uh, a seat belt? Or why are passengers advised to put on seat belts? The reason is simple. From the explanation we have seen, seat belts hold the passengers on their seats in case the vehicle comes to a sudden stop. Just imagine you are on the front seat and the vehicle stops suddenly and you didn't have a seat belt on. Then you could fly away from the windscreen. Now, I think you're going to put on your seat belt always. Newton's first law of motion is also called the law of inertia. The next thing we're going to discuss under Newton's first law of motion is momentum. I know we normally misuse this word momentum. When you're playing uh, with your peers, some of you do misuse this word that I'm going to run with a lot of momentum. I'm going to push it or push something with a lot of momentum. Now we need to understand the word momentum. Let me ask you, between a car and a truck, which one will start faster? Obviously, we know the car is very easy to start. Now, if you compare a car and the truck, what are some of the differences that you see? The first one is the car has a smaller mass while the truck has a bigger mass. So in this case, since the car has a smaller mass, it requires a smaller force to start than a truck. When it comes to applying brakes, the truck requires more force than the car. Thus, the truck is said to possess a greater momentum than the car. What is momentum? Momentum is defined as the product of mass of a body and its velocity. That's the symbol of momentum we have here. That's the simple momentum. So momentum is equal to the mass and velocity. So the SI unit of momentum is going to be kilogram meter per second kilogram from the mass meter per second from the velocity so it's going to be kilogram meter per second the symbol is as shown here that the symbol for the uh, SI unit of momentum momentum is a vector quantity let's work out a numerical example a car of mass 800 kilograms starts from rest and moves at a velocity of 30 meters per second determine its momentum. So when you work out such a kind of uh, questions, the first thing you normally do is to write the formula. The formula is very key as it helps you to know what you're looking for. And from this formula, you're going to be able to list what you have so that you can get what you don't have. So remember, there's a video I've done on problem solving strategies. Go look for that video and see how to best approach numerical examples. But now let's continue with our example. Now, since we are looking for momentum, we've been given mass 800 kilograms and uh, the velocity is 30 meters per second. If you multiply 800 times 300, you're going to get 2,400 kilogram meter per second. Well, that's the end of our lesson today. Thank you for watching until the end. I would like to urge you to subscribe to my channel because in the next video, I'm going to talk about Newton's second law of motion and you don't want to miss out on that. Bye.